Order. Recognizing the member for Caribou North. Thank you very much, uh, Honourable uh, Chair. Um, I rise today uh, to address Bill 12, the Public Health Accountability and Cost Recovery Act. And um, I want to thank uh, my colleague from Prince George, Belmont, um, for talking about Carson Cleland. And uh, I want to spend a few moments, if I may, um, out of respect for both the family, um, the friends, the community that um, have been tragically impacted by, um, by Carson Cleland. October 12th was an incredibly tragic day um, for the family both Ryan and Nicola. And it speaks to where I think that this bill, and I know that this bill came out of good intentions. Because I know that there are families across this province um, that are dealing with the horrible consequences that so many of our kids are dealing with around the increased uh, impacts of sextortion. And so I wanted to take a few minutes um, to put the words of Ryan and Nicola uh, forward in this legislature because I think it's critically important before I go into elements of the bill. And Carson's mom wanted um, to share a few comments um, out of this incredible horrible um, impact of losing her young son uh, to online sextortion. And she said, you know, we need to be more active with our kids. And even if you are active, please talk to your kids about predators and all the things that are happening online. And as much as younger kids hate parents, uh, going on their phones, maybe, maybe they have to, end quote. And we are calling on all parents and caregivers to be honest with young people about the damages of online activity, especially if they engage in chats with people that they don't know in real life. Madam Speaker, I did not know um, this fact that teenage boys between the ages of 14 to 17 are most impacted by these crimes. And experts say that boys are more likely to start communicating with someone on social media, especially if they think it's with someone within their own age group who is sexually interested in them. I didn't know that. I, like I'm sure many members in this legislature, have been meeting with far more parents um, that have been bringing in their concerns and their experiences with young people in their lives. Because for so many of us, um, I had to ask you know, what is Snapchat and how does that work? And, you know, there is, there is such an evolution in social media and the impacts that it's having on our young people. Um, it's hard for us of a certain generation to even understand um, how some of those uh, media forms work. And I wanted to read into this record too that if you were a parent or a loved one, or look, even if you are a young person that actually scrolled accidentally and have found this channel by some reason, we want to send a very clear message that if you are a victim of sextortion, it's important that first you stop communicating immediately with the person and do not give in to their demands. 
deactivate the accounts that you are using to communicate with that person. And most importantly, please reach out for help and support. Call your local police. Other contacts include needhelpnow.ca and cybertip.ca for support. It is my hope, Madam Speaker, as it is for all members in this legislature, that the tragedy of Carson Cleland doesn't happen to any other family. So Madam Speaker, I understand the intent of Bill 12. I understand why it was brought forward and I understand the importance of the bill. The concern that we have heard is that the scope of the bill does not necessarily meet the intent um, that the Premier and the government set forward when they were discussing the intent of what this bill was supposed to address. Of course, the safeguard and physical and mental health and well-being of British Columbians and our young people is so critically important. But we fear, Honourable Speaker, that the parameters of Bill 12 must be clearly and appropriately defined so as not to inadvertently expose a wide spectrum of businesses to legal risk. The current draft of this bill does not achieve this and what we're asking for is a pause. We are asking for that this critical bill, that we take the time to make sure that there are not unintended consequences and that we do the necessary work to go out and consult. Because Honourable Speaker, we've heard that um, if enacted, that this law will appears to apply to any product, good, service, or byproduct, product and or service, which we understand can create liability for almost any business operating in or connected to BC. So I want to take a few moments just to talk about what that potentially could mean in the riding of Caribou North, soon to be the riding of Prince George North Caribou. We are incredibly proud of all of the small and medium-sized businesses that operate, support, create the jobs, ensure that the economy of the Caribou, the interior, Prince George, the North, provide for this province. You know, that mom and pop store that has been operating for, in many cases, for generations, that give back to our soccer teams, our hockey teams, our arts festivals, are so critically important. And I start with comments um, in response to uh, this bill, uh, specifically from the Chambers of Commerce in our region. And what they've raised is that because of the broad scope of how this legislation is being presented, that we now potentially, with passing of this legislation, now have a law that could hold any business responsible for any product, good, or service that can cause or may contribute to disease, injury, or illness, or any product or service that potentially could even create a risk of disease, injury, or illness without clear criteria for determining these risks or costs. I've had the opportunity to hear many of my colleagues uh, come forward and speak to this, uh, this particular bill and reflect on the incredible businesses that we have in our communities and 
you know, I, I particularly uh, enjoyed some of the comments about, you know, some of the snack food. Uh, it's end of Thursday and I know people are tired and that thought of getting snacks, um, you know, was, was something that people were talking about earlier. Uh, and it just, you know, the point that I think some of the speakers before me were talking about is we all know that there are products um, in, our, in our choices of what we like to uh, eat that have potential uh, to contribute um, to disease or illness. And so who hold, you know, where do we hold that liability? Um, and I think when we ask for parameters of what that looks like, I think it's it's a fair choice. It's a or it's a fair reflection um, that many of the small businesses are just asking those questions and and are asking to be consulted, to take the time to work with the interested parties to ensure that there are appropriate guard rails in place, and that again there are no unintended consequences. You know, some of the other um, organizations that are in my community that have raised concerns about this bill is um, the Council of Forest Industries. Look, I have a community and a region that is dependent on our forest economy. And whether you're looking at an MDF plant, a plywood plant, a pulp, the pulp sector, value-added, uh, bioenergy, um, sawmilling, um, so many of the products that contribute to uh, building the homes that all of us need in British Columbia and play a critical, and, uh, a critical role in building the future, the homes that we all need, um, have some significant concerns about a bill that now provides a minister or ministers um, the ability to provide a or to um, to put a cost on a business, a certificate of a cost of a business, if there is uh, any, um, if it appears that there's a product or service that may cause or may contribute to disease, injury, or illness, but any product or service that contributes even to the risk of disease, injury, or illness. Um, and there's a 15-year span on that. So the Council of Forest Industries have raised concerns about this bill, and they would like to have that conversation uh, with the government to understand uh, what the intent of including um, some of the other business associate or some of the uh, the liability piece that is talked about in this bill. Uh, some of the other uh, business associations that have come forward is the BC Craft Breweries. And we have an incredible craft brewery in our community, Barkerville Brewing. Um, a fantastic uh, small business in our region. And they've raised, you know, rightfully the association's raised concerns. They've raised concerns about what the liability means for um, for their uh, association. Um, Able BC have raised concerns um, about from the liquor uh, industry what this bill uh, means for them and the ability from a, a, the, a cabinet minister to say, hey, I think today that we should go after this um, particular group of businesses to recover the, ho the health costs. Um, related to any injury uh, that may happen, and even if it's 15 years down the road. We heard from um, uh, the Business Council of British Columbia about the impacts, and I'm going to spend a few minutes uh, specifically uh, talking about a few things that um, I've had the opportunity uh, to review, having the opportunity to review with the business, uh, BC Business Council about the significant concerns that continue to be raised about, raised about the erosion of the standard of living of British Columbians. Now often when we talk about the economy and we talked about productivity, sometimes that language is hard for, um, it's hard to understand how that impacts us as individuals. 
we've seen a significant decline in productivity in the province and in this country, and it is, a, it is a, an emergency. It's an emergency that we have to address when we look at the per capita GDP and where that number is particularly growing and how that's going to impact not just our generation but future generations and contributes to the fact that our young people's standard of living is eroding. And part of the piece of that decline in productivity is the fact that we have not seen the type of investment that is required, the innovation, the research um, coming into British Columbia. And there are a number of reasons for that. But part of that is about an uncertainty. So when we bring forward legislation and we bring forward policies and regulations that contribute to a sense of uncertainty in this province and impacts investment decisions, we should all be incredibly alarmed. All of us in this legislature should want to ensure that the legislation that we bring forward doesn't have the type of unintended consequences that will impact not just our generation but future generations as we deliver a message or send signals or this government sends signals out broadly uh, not just to Canada but to the, um, a larger global audience that we're not open for business. Concerns that um, we will set up an environment where we have that cumulative level of taxation, that we have regulation that changes all of the time, that what might be uh, a regulation that is in place today can simply be changed by a minister tomorrow that can have significant consequences on that particular business is very, very concerning. Because at the end of the day, what happens if we drive all of these businesses out of our province? What happens if we hollow out our communities right across this province? What if people decide that it's not worth the risk anymore of coming in and operating a business in British Columbia? Where do we get the services and the products that people depend on? Look, government can't provide everything, nor should they. We need to make sure that free enterprise and we need to make sure that we have an environment that creates a healthy, investment climate, where innovation and research is showcased, where people can benefit from understanding that we have a taxation, a regulation, and a policy environment that says, I am willing to invest in that innovative product or that research to make sure that we're global leaders. Isn't that something that we should all be aspiring to, to ensure that we have the types of globally competitive businesses here in the province of British Columbia that ensures that we have the revenues that we all need to pay for health care and education and all those services that we depend on. What happens if we drive all of the business and revenue out of this province? Who is going to pay for the health care? Who is going to pay for our education system? We've got to do a better job, and it is an, uh, an emergency that we have in this province that is impacting not just our standard of living, but the standard of living for our kids. So we're not saying that the, dis the, the choice that the government made to bring this bill forward, it is a laudable one. We should be looking at ways to keep our kids safe. But the broad scope that this bill has brought forward 
has significant consequences. And then there's just, there's just, just basic hypocrisy, right? Like, so, you know, we're, we're gonna hold private liquor stores for the potential uh, harms that happen, but our government-run liquor stores, you're, you're fine, you're not included in this. You know, the harm that is happening um, because of policies that this government has made, they're not responsible for any of the health care costs or damages that are being done in the community. Um, the government's off the hook, but anyone in the private sector um, is, uh, I think, is, is deeply um, alarming and troubling. And as we delve deeper into this bill and during the committee stage, you know, our focus will be ensuring that the, provi the provisions in this bill effectively address public health concerns um, without imposing undue burdens on entities that operate within the bounds of the law. Because I know I've heard from many businesses and they feel that they've done everything right. They, you know, for so many of them, um, I talked to a business uh, just this past weekend and um, third, third generation in our community. And they just feel that at what point under the current taxation and policies and regulations that are happening in this province, do they just shut their doors? They just don't feel welcome in this province anymore. And um, I think that's troubling. You know, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business has been doing some, you know, really solid work on reaching out uh, to businesses and members across this province and, and just articulating the challenges and the risks of policies and regulation, and then in this particular case, um, Bill 12, of legislation that has the potential to have far-reaching consequences outside the scope of what the bill was originally set out to do. And so what we're saying is take a moment, government, to reach out to the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses. Read out, reach out to Restaurants Canada. Boy, have we heard from the restaurant sector about the challenges that they are currently experiencing. So to the members, uh, uh, the constituents in my writing, what happens when we lose more restaurants in our communities? How does that impact your choices? How does that impact our jobs? How does that impact our economy? And you should, as we are today, raising the alarm bells that when these associations step up and say we have some significant concerns about this legislation and we're just asking to be consulted so that we understand and that we can deliver to government our concerns. I think it's important that we do that. Some of the other organizations um, that drive the economy of British Columbia is the Canadian manufacturers and exporters. And we should be proud of the manufacturers, the agro, um, the agro uh, industry, um, manufacturing industry plays a critical role when we talk about food security. And all of these things are very important and they've raised alarm bells about this bill and the unintended um, consequences. How about the BC Greenhouse Growers Association who also raised that? So when food security starts being threatened by legislation in this bill because we just don't have a clear understanding of the consequences of this bill, we should be paying attention. When a BC Greenhouse Growers Association says, look, we need some more time and we need to be consulted to understand the impact of Bill 12 and what this means for our association, we should be paying attention. When the chemical, um, uh, the chemistry industry um, raises concerns um, to this government, we should be taking action and we should be paying attention. And finally, maybe just to spend a few moments on talking about our incredible 
incredible tourism association and tourism industries across this province. Look, I know that this is the time of year that we are encouraging everyone to make sure you plan a staycation. Make sure you look at opportunities to get out and enjoy everything that British Columbia has to offer, but particularly save some of your hard-earned dollars to give back in uh, and enjoy uh, some of the extraordinarily um, incredible uh, tourism assets and businesses that we have in this province. Look, they've raised alarm bells on this bill. The tourism industry is saying, look, we just think that we want to be consulted, we want to have that conversation with government, we understand, um, we understand at a high level why the government brought this forward, but the legislation has some significant flaws that I think need, so what they're asking is pause, take a moment, to have reflection on the unintended consequences that this bill could have um, on all of these uh, different businesses, small businesses, groups, and organizations across this province. Because at what point, and I said this before, um, once we have bills that send that message across the globe that British Columbia is no longer a welcoming environment to invest or do business in, we're all going to have serious consequences in the fact that we will no longer have the revenue that we need to ensure that we can provide the quality services in healthcare and education and all of the social supports that I know how important it is in each of these communities. So in closing, we are asking the government to take a sober pause, to reflect on the consequences or unintended consequences of how they have written this bill Number 12, the Public Health Accountability and Cost Recovery Act 2024. To take the necessary time to go out and consult and to meet in communities. Look, I would be happy to help the government set up meetings in my riding. And I'm sure every member in this house would, be, would welcome the opportunity to have the government come in to our communities and sit down and consult with people in our communities and to listen to their experiences and to listen to their concerns. Because at the end of the day, we are all elected by constituents in our community and quite frankly, government needs to do a far better job of listening to the impacts of their regulation, their policies, and their taxes and the impacts it's having on everyone. 